Coming up, Jonathan goes down to Mexico, searching for an elusive fish that is only found around two islands in the entire world. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The island of Cozumel is a picture-perfect example of a diver's paradise. Crystal clear water surrounds the coasts, and just offshore, verdant reefs filled with healthy populations of fish, invertebrates, and sea turtles. Within the reefs, there are cracks and holes, some of which large enough for divers to explore. But the ones where divers don't fit become home to marine life. Fish hide from predators. Sharks rest. And in smaller holes, a rare reclusive fish, the splendid toadfish, one of the most photogenic and sought after photo subjects in the Caribbean. In our search for this little beauty, Zach of all trades and I fly on down to Cozumel, Mexico, just off the coast of Cancun. We head on over to the marina, where we stop in with our friends at Scuba Life. These guys cater to small groups of divers like us. We fill out some paperwork, and we're on our way. While Captain Alex is taking us out to the dive site, I chat with JP, an expert toadfish spotter. He assures me we will find some toadfish. There are a lot of great dive sites around Cozumel, but we're heading to a place where JP knows of toadfish to be seen. I can't wait to get in the water and do my favorite thing, scuba diving. Well, let's go find some toadfish. When we hit the water, Zach, JP, and I don't even have to swim. Cozumel is famous for its drift diving. Water flows past the island like a giant river, so we just ride the current and glide above the reef. It's not a very good workout, because you just lay back and let the scenery go by. No kicking required. The problem comes when you want to stop. I find a hawksbill sea turtle chomping on sponges, so I have to kick to stay in place and hunker down. You would think that sea turtles would be experts at feeding in the current, but in her pursuit of the tastiest bites, she gets herself turned around backwards. Woohoo! Soon she decides to look in a different spot, and I realize just how hard it is to swim into this current. Making any headway upstream is nearly impossible. Captain Alex dropped us upstream of the spot where we'll find the toadfish, so we can have a nice drift over the reef. JP leads us over into a really nice section of coral. But you have to look fast, because if you go shooting past anything, it's not that easy to get back to it. Some of the fish play in the current, and some of the fish hide from it. A grouper hangs out in his living room and watches the action out the front door. When I pop in to say hi with my lights, 
he decides to take a swim around the neighborhood and get some exercise until I'm gone. Every little protected area on the reef has a school of fish hiding from the current. And most of them would rather pose for my camera than swim away. They're used to divers floating by. An arrow crab has taken refuge in a sponge, a soft bachelor pad to chill. As we continue downstream, we finally reach Toadfish City, and within 30 seconds, JP points out the first toadfish. Hey everybody, Jonathan here to tell you about Blue World Plus, our extras and behind the scenes channel. Are you subscribed? Well, if you're not, you should be. There's the link. Check it out after the episode. Thanks, later. So what is so special about this little fish? It has only been found in two places, the reefs of Cozumel and the reefs of the nearby island of Isla Mujeres. It's a super rare fish and normally doesn't come out of its den during the day. Its chin whiskers, called barbels, are chemosensitive, helping the fish find food in the sand. And while you might think they're called toadfish because they look a little bit like toads, they do something else. The croaking sound is made with the swim bladder, so they don't move their mouth to croak, and this is thought to be a mating call. Hey ladies, come check me out! Even though I have a pretty cooperative toadfish here sitting still for my camera and bright lights, I sure would like to see the whole fish. JP keeps looking. As the afternoon goes on and the light levels get lower, we have a better chance of finding one out looking for food. JP finds a lot more toadfish in their dens. Maybe some of them are listening for just the right croak from a potential partner. But then, JP calls me over, and there it is, something I've never seen before. A splendid toadfish out of its den. It was probably looking for food, and now it's a little unsure what to do in front of my bright lights. I know the encounter isn't going to last long. And this is what you can't normally see the spectacular yellow coloration. What could it possibly be for? Probably not camouflage. Maybe to attract a mate. Tired of my lights, the fish turns and disappears into the reef. Yet, amazingly, JP, the fish whisperer, finds another one. You can see that the toadfish has a pair of fins under its body called pelvic fins, used almost like a stubby little pair of legs. It can stand up and even walk on those fins. The sun really is getting low now, and so is our air. JP inflates a surface marker buoy to send up so that Captain Alex can find us. Who knows how far we drifted since we splashed off the boat. You know, I always wondered why they called them toadfish, but now I know it has nothing to do with how they look. They croak! Cozumel is a fantastic dive destination. The current feeds nutrients to the reef, and as a result, the life on the reefs flourishes. 
There are so many fish and sea turtles, every dive is exciting. And it's nice to know I'm not the only one who can be clumsy. The splendid toadfish is a rare gem of a fish found in the water around only two islands in the whole world. It's a beautiful and, yes, splendid inhabitant of the blue world. Hey everyone! Thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end! Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode! And check out our new second channel, Blue World Plus, for some awesome behind-the-scenes vlogs and extras!